So I just watched episode two of season one of Orange is the New Black, and there were a few surprises there. Most prominently, the whole thing with the big cliffhanger of the last episode that Alex is in the same prison is almost completely ignored here. There's this one scene where Piper gets this really awesome moment where even as she's in the middle of being starved, she won't accept cornbread uh, from Alex because they'll be giving in to her. But um, for the most part, uh, it uh, focuses uh, on uh, that actual starvation itself because our viewpoint character, or at least the focus one, is red because the show is apparently going uh, through the same kind of structure as Lost, where in each episode we get flashbacks to how uh, one of these people ended up in prison. Although we don't actually see that this time, but uh, it ends on a note that uh, makes it pretty clear at what happened. Uh, although maybe there is still a twist coming out of that because it does seem a bit odd that they didn't go all the way to showing her getting arrested. But um, uh, for now, Kate Mulgrew is definitely enough to uh, like make it worth waiting for because it, she gets to do um, a lot of what she did best on Voyager, which is just, you know, those times where she just got to glare uh, furiously at someone uh, is amazing every time she pulls it out. And it, it was a shame she didn't get to do it more often on this show, on that show. And it seems uh, like in this one, she is getting to do it a lot more. So that's something to look forward to, definitely. And um, um, it definitely, it uh, puts Piper in this interesting position where she has to realize that there's no magic thing she can say or do to get out of the predicament she's put herself in. That all she can do is just the best she can and hope it works. And that is said, seem apparently kind of a big mission statement for the show at this point. Like we're still just getting to know these people and this world. And um, I, my guess is that's going to be a big theme going forward that uh, these not nothing is guaranteed in the, like this prison. It, it may be minimum security, but there's still like some really hard stuff that goes on in there. And uh, like, I'm guessing some people are going to die or uh, at least like get carted off and never seen again. But um, you know, we are still uh, basically learning our way through this and uh, Kate Mulgrew is definitely a good person to have on your side in that kind of thing, like getting the audience hooked, because uh, she definitely has uh, that acting quality that uh, gets you instantly interested in them. But uh, one other thing that is uh, kind of bugged me in the last episode, I didn't really talk about that. I wanted to wait until I saw how more things went through it, but this time it, I really do have to talk about it, which is uh, uh, they keep calling Piper a former lesbian instead of bisexual and it really it just comes off as weird it, like the show is refusing to acknowledge that bisexuality exists you're either one thing or you're the other and never the twain shall meet or like you can only be one at a time and it, it's just this bizarre writing choice that I hope at least got people's attention and was fixed for future seasons if it wasn't in this one because it you know, the Netflix model, they released the whole season at once, so they couldn't get any feedback on their first seasons, any of them. Which really seems like a, a weird way to write something, but, uh, you know, they're doing well with it, so uh, kudos to everyone who makes it work. Um, there's uh, not much else going on here, although I did recognize the voice of Bismuth uh, with this one prisoner, Suzanne who is now moving in on Piper, and uh, that's probably going to be the next episode. I'm guessing uh, we're going to get flashbacks to her next time. And uh, I'm, I'm just uh, still uh, pretty impressed with the show so far, so I'm definitely looking forward to that one. And I'll see you all there.